all see my stream? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, today we're still going to do linear functions. Okay, today and next week, Monday. I'm not sure whether next week, Monday will have a class. But today we are still doing linear functions and we'll cover the concepts of demand and supply. So by the end of this class, or for those who did not attend, if they will, say, they will check the video. After this session, you should be able to plot the demand. To, oh, you should be able to plot the demand and supply function. And this thing is between the two drafts. And you should be able to know. Oh, you should you should be able to determine the, the equation of the demand and supply from if you are given uh, a scenario, then you should be able to determine the equation on your own. Okay, as I said, today we'll cover demand and supply, like the concepts of demand and supply. Okay, uh, the reason we are doing, oh, the reason we need to learn the, about the demand and supply, is because these two concepts are the key to understanding the, ec the economy. And because it reflects the prices and quantity of consumers, goods and services within the economy. So according to the market economy theory, the relationship between the two, which is the supply and demand, balances out up at the equilibrium point price. Right. And in this module, we'll only consider the simplest model of demand and supply where the demand for a supply and product depends on only on price. Okay, um, sorry, just a second. I'm sorry about that. Okay, I was saying in this module, we will only do the simplest model of demand and supply, whereby our dependent variable will be, will be a price on, 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 on the model that we will solve, right? In both supply and demand. But there are other variables that can affect demand and supply. Like, for example, the demand can be affected by the consumer income, the price of substitute and supplements, and the level of ad advertising. And for a supply, we count the cost of production, the price of other goods, and availability of technology. Okay, starting from demand. Okay, um, the demand, this is just the desire or willingness or av availability of consumer to pay a certain price for a product or a service given that in any pe period, right? And another thing, businesses, um, a business use the demand to determine the necessary supply and how a price can be determined, okay? In the simplest form, okay, I'll use the definition that we had from our study that we have from other, our study guide, which is the simplest definition. It says the term demand represents the quantity of a product or a service. Okay, for a quantity or a service, we'll use we'll use Q to determine the quantity or service, and then we'll use we're, going to, we're still going to use P to determine the price. So this says the term demands, demand represents the quantity of a product or a service that consumers would buy at a certain price. Uh, yeah. 
And another thing, the demand for a product is net negatively related to the price that is asked for a product. Like um, the quantity demanded increases when the price increases. Right. Um, yes. Can you please uh, repeat on the explanation or the term of a demand? Okay. First, I said the demand is the desire or willingness or the ability of consumer to pay a certain price for a product or a service at a given period. And then you can use the simplest form definition, which is in our study guide, they de they determined they define demand as the term that represent the quantity of a product or a service that consumers would like to buy at a certain price. Okay, and then we have a negative relation between the price and the product, a price that is asked for a product, right? Okay, that means the quantity demanded increases when the price increases. Okay, consumers will pay less of a product if its price increases, while they will buy more of a product if a lower price at a lower price. Like for example, let's say you are selling maybe ice creams or something. Okay. Let me say um water. You selling water. See if if you increase the price of your water, then you will have less buyers. And if your water is cheaper, then you'll have more buyers, right? That means your water will be will be in demand. Okay, for example, let's say we have business A and we have business B. Okay, say these ones they sell their water at 10 rand a bottle. And then business B sell, sells their water at 12 rand a bottle. You see, the demand for, for business A would be, in, oh, the, business A would be more in demand compared to business B because business A is cheaper. It's more afford, affordable compared to business B. So that's what they mean when they say the quantity demanded increases when the price increases, meaning the product has a negative relation to price asked for a product. Okay, the demand of a product has a negative relation with the price asked for a product. Uh, please unmute your mic. Okay. To represent the demand, we'll use this function. Q is equal to A minus B, BP. Okay, again, A and B, these are constant. Meaning there can be any values, right? And Q is the dependent variable and P is the independent variable, right? Meaning Q will always depend on, on P. Because remember, we said Q is the, uh, represent the quantity demanded, right? And P represent the price of the, qu of the quantity, right? Demanded. So now I'm saying Q will depend on P, right? Going back here to our 
relation. He said the quantity, the demand of the quantity will depend on the price. When the price increases, then the, dem the demand will decrease, right? And when the price decreases, then the quantity will increase. Meaning, this means Q will always depend on P. Okay, that's why we said Q is the dependent variable and P is the ind independent variable. Okay, um, if we compare this Q is equal to A minus B, P, B, P. If we compare this to any linear function, right, you will see that um, the vertical asymptotes or intercepts, it's the vertical intercept is A, right, it's given by A. Remember, to find the vertical intercept, you substitute zero. You substitute zero in, in the independent variable, right? And if you substitute zero here, we'll have Q is equal to A minus B times zero, which is, which is A, meaning Q is equal to A, right? And this is our vertical, it's, it's our vertical intercept, okay? Meaning this is zero is S to Q. It's, it's this point, right? And then we find the other intercept, which is the horizontal axis by letting Q to be zero. Okay, now to find the vertical, the, the horizontal, which is the x-axis, will let this one, this variable to be zero. And if we let this variable to be zero, we'll have zero is equal to a minus bq, right? Meaning, okay, if we transpose this to that side, we'll have BQ is equal to A, and we want to make Q the subject of the formula. Okay, this is A, and this is Q. We can divide by B on both sides. If we divide by B on both sides, we will have Q is equal to A over B, right? Which is our, big, our horizontal axis. So we have, we have this point, on our vertical axis, and we have minus B, or we have A over B on our horizontal axis. Okay. Now, if, if, yes. Can I speak? Yes. But the, wasn't the original equation Q is equal to A minus B P? Yes. But I see in the law, in the, in the last, in the last, yeah, in the last equation there, we now, we had Q. Just we further have, down, carry on further down, scroll down, scroll down, there. We're now saying zero is equal to A minus B Q. Oh, okay. We, we had Q is equal to A minus B P, B P, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I said, to find the horizontal axis, you need to let Q to be zero. That's why now where there was Q, I have zero is equal to A minus BQ. Remember, when we were finding the vertical, the vertical axis, we let we let P to be zero. So where there was P on the origin from the original equation, we substituted P with zero. That's why we have Q is equal to A minus B times zero. Remember here there was P. Now, when we find the horizontal axis, we go back to the original equation. We let Q to be zero. That's why now I have zero is equal to A minus BQ. 
Can I ask? Sorry. Yes. I think what uh I think I hear what uh, Miss Erin is saying is that is it not supposed to be zeros equal to a minus b p, and not a yes. equal to b q? Because we for we 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 have q at the beginning of the equation. Yes, b p p shouldn't change. Oh, we have oh it's oh now I get it. It's my writing error. We have p here, then we had q here. Oh, I didn't know that I made a mistake here. Thank you. So we have P, and then this is still P. So this means we have P is equal to A over B, right? Yeah, this is fine. It's P here. I'm sorry about that. Okay, this is still P. <laughs> Fine. I will do this. So do we have Q is equal to A minus BP? And then where there is Q, I substitute Q with zero. So we have zero is equal to A minus BP. And then we transpose this to the other side and we'll be left with P. BP is equal to A. And then we divide by B on both sides since we want the value of Q, right? And if we do that, we'll have this one and this one will cancel out and we'll have B. P is equal to A over B, right? So this means we have another point. A, B is to zero. Okay. If you were asked to draw this, to plot this, this, this linear function, this demand linear function, uh, since we now have two points, you can just draw your x-axis and, and then you write this point, which is 0 is to A. This one, 0 is. Oh, we said these are the vertical axis, which is Q, and we have the horizontal axis, which is P in this in this case. And we said we have two points, which is zero is to A. And then we have another point A over B is to zero, right? Okay, this one is on the vertical axis. Say we have zero, A, then another number. And here, let's say we have, okay, we have zero, a number and A over B, right? It's, it's this point, zero is to A, and we have this point. Um, someone please accept the one that is on the loop. We have A over B is to zero. So we just have to combine this point. And if you combine these two points, we have this graph. We have these plots that represent the demanded function, the demand function. And again, you see, this this graph is decreasing, right? And going back to our to our general equation, to our um, the general equation for a demand function, we have Q is equal to A minus B, BQ. We said this is, we said our P is the ind independent variable, right? So the constant of, of, of P would be this, our slope here. Since 
the constant of P is minus B, meaning it's negative since it's, it's minus. So this graph is correct if it's decreasing. Because the slope is negative. Okay, let's try and do one example. On how to draw. Okay, let's say we are given a function and we are asked to represent it graphically and it interpret it. Let's say, for example, we are given Q is equal to 400 minus P. And we are told that this is a demanded a demand function, right? And we are asked to plot it and and then interpret our graph. Okay. Okay, to plot any linear function, you can either either find two points on the graph or you can just find one point plus the slope of the graph but then i prefer to find two points and then com combine those two points but then those two those two ways will give you the same results right so okay in my case i always prefer to find the intercepts like you find Q intercepts and and P intercepts, right? Meaning, like you on on comparing these two, the normal linear function, you'll say you'll find the x intercepts and the y intercepts, where Q in this case is our y intercepts and x is and and P is our x intercepts, right? Okay, going back to to this graph, I said if you find Q intercepts, you let P to be zero, and if you find P intercepts, you let Q to be zero. Okay, for let's start with with the P intercepts, right? With the Q intercepts, for Q intercepts which is the vertical, the vertical line, the vertical intercept. You let P to be zero, right? And if we let P to be zero, we'll have Q is equal to 400 minus four times zero, which is just 400, right? That means we have this point zero is to 400, okay? And I said I always prefer this way of finding two points and then combine them. Right. Okay. To find another point, we we'll let our Q to be zero. Right. And then we we'll let we'll say this is a P P intercept, which is a horizontal a horizontal intercept or a horizontal axis, okay? To get this, this point, we said we we'll let our Q to be zero, right? Going back to this equation that we were given, if we let our Q, if we let Q to be zero, we'll have zero is equal to 400 minus or P, right? Okay. The aim here is to let is to make P a subject of the formula, right? And to do this, we have to transpose everything to the other side. Everything that has to do with P be on on one side and the number the variables be on the on on the another side, right? The values. And if we do that, let's say we transpose minus four P. 
if you are transposing any number, the sign of that number will change. Okay. So we'll have 4P is equal to 400. And we don't want 4P, we want P, right? We need to get rid of 4. The only way we can get rid of 4 is to divide by 4 on both sides. And if we divide by 4 on both sides, we'll have P is equal to 100. Meaning we have a second point, which is 100 is to P. And we still have this one, which is 0 is to 400, right? Since we now have two points, we can plot our, our, our graph. And we said the vertical x axis are the q axis and the horizontal axis are the p axis okay uh, on this side on the vertical axis we have until 400 so we can have 100 200 300 and 400 which is this point which is zero is to 400 because on this point our P is zero and our P is zero on this axis, right? And then we have another point, hundred is zero. Here, our Q is zero and our Q is zero on this axis, right? Let me say I have 50, I have hundred, so I have this point which is 100 is to zero. And then the next thing you need to do is to combine the two points. Okay. If you were given this function, then this graph would represent that, that function. Okay, you, you, you might have, okay, someone else will like, uh, it, it's still okay if you don't want to find the, the intercept, if you don't want to let P to be zero and then find Q and let Q to be zero and then find P. Let's say you, you'd be like, okay, I want P to be 100 and then you solve for Q and then Someone else will be like, uh, I want Q to be 50, and then you solve for P. Those points will still give you the same, the same shape. What matters here is the shape of the graph, if you got it correct. But you do need points. So your points might differ. Okay. But then another question was to interpret this, this graph. Right. So to interpret this graph, you'll say, uh, okay, remember this is the price. You can say if the price is 100 friend, the quantity of demand is zero. Remember, Q is zero here. And Q represent the demand and P represent the price. So like, when the price is 100 rand, the quantity of demand is zero, meaning you, will ne you won't have buyers if your price is 100 rand. Do we have questions? Nothing from us. No. Okay, so um, this is, yes. Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, so when interpreting the graph, um, will it be wrong or uh, like, I'm not sure if you, you are specific, like you have to include the numbers. Will it be wrong for me to say um, uh, as the price increases, the demand decreases in terms of interpreting. That's 
still fine. Okay, so you just interpret the graph anyhow. You don't have to include the numbers. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Then let's move on to the supply. Okay, the supply is any amount of resources a firm or a business or other any economic agent is willing to provide in the marketplace or to an individual. And another thing, supply can be any produced goods, labor, time, raw material, or any other space or valuable objects okay, can represent the supply. That's the simplest definition. You can use the one in the study guide. Meaning the term supply represents the, the quantity of a product or service that is made available to the markets depending on the price or the product of service. Okay. Now we have a positive relation. Remember, on the demand, we have the negative relation between the quantity demanded and the price, right? And now we have a positive relation between the supply of a product and its price, meaning the quantity supplies increases when the price increases, right? And this means when the price of a good is high, suppliers want to sell more in order to make more profit. And yeah, that's the supply. When the price of a good decreases, however, supplies will also decrease the quantity of the quantity supply. And then for this, we will use this function to represent the supply. Q is equal to C plus dp. Again, c and d are the constant. And remember, the constant, they can be negative or positive. They can just be any value. Sometimes they can be, they, they can be zero, right? And again, here, P still represents the price, and Q represents the number of units supplied, and, and P is the price per unit. Okay, still these are constant set. If you are given a function like this, you first need to compare it to, to the linear function which is, let's say, y is equal to a plus, okay, let me write c and d, dx. If you compare these two, you'll see that the vertical intercept will be represented by, by c. And remember, the vertical intercept is when you let, okay, can be calculated by letting the dependent variable to be zero. And the independent variable to, oh, that's what we are solving for. So we will let this value to be zero and then to okay to obtain the vertical intercept which in this case is c because if we let x which is p in this case to be zero then we'll have q is equal to c and this is a vertical intercept and to find the horizontal intercept we let q 
to be zero. And if we let Q to be zero, we'll have zero is equal to C plus DP. And this will give us DP is equal to C, which is P is equal to C over T, right? Meaning okay. now we have two points, which is Okay, this was zero is to C, and we have C over D is to C over D. Oh, it's minus because if you transpose this to the other side, okay, let's you'll have. It's either you transpose this to that side, you'll have minus, or you transpose this to that side, you, and this will be minus, and this will be positive. But at the end, you will have P is equal to C over D, because if you let this to be minus, you'll have to divide with minus D on both sides. This will give you minus C over D. Right? So we have minus C over D is to zero. We have two points. Zero is to C. And we have minus C over D is to zero. Okay. And if we plot these two. Hello. Yes. Yes, can you please, uh, why we we had a negative C over D? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Let me start here. I said on, on, on this general equation, where there is Q, you, you substitute Q with zero, right? So, we'll have something like this Q, oh, zero is equal to C plus DP, right? Yes. Okay, the aim here is to let P to be the subject of the formula, right? Mm -hmm. And if, okay, to do this, to do that, you have to transpose anything, any value without P, and you should be left with variables with P on one side. And if we do that, let's say we transpose DP. And if we transpose DP, any number, if you let you, you transpose it to the other side of the equal sign, the, the sign is changed. Sign changes, right? So we have minus C D minus DP is equal to C. Right. Okay. Our aim is to find P, not minus DP. So we need to get rid of minus D. So we can just divide with minus D on both sides. And if we do that, minus D and minus D will cancel out and we'll have P is equal to minus C over D. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Okay, going back to our graph, we said these are the Q axis, the Q axis, the vertical line, and we have the P axis on the horizontal line. Right. Okay, we we have two points. We have we have minus C D is to zero. Good. And we have okay. We have this and this, right? And remember this. The first value represent P, and then this point, that the second value represent Q, right? So 
we have C over D is to zero, which is here, right? And going back to, to, to this equation, we have Q is equal to C plus DP, right? Since P is the independent variable, we said any constant of the independent variable is our slope. And this, and this constant here is positive, right? Meaning our graph is increasing. If this point is here, then our graph is going up. Yes. No. Yeah. Sorry, can yes. I just ask, shouldn't it be a negative? So shouldn't it either be on the other side of the, of the graph? You mean, okay, here, C O, okay, here Q is negative, right? Yes. We can, we can't have quantity and a negative price. They will always be on the first quadrant. And remember, um, C, C and D, those are just constant. You might be given C as negative and D as positive. So that means we'll have negative divided by D times this negative, and that would give you a positive value. Oh, okay, okay. So it's just, it's just the formula. Like it's not accurate to the actual numbers. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, just make sure that your draft is always on the first quadrant because you can't have these two as negatives. That's why um, you can even check on, on our notes. That's why here we have dotted lines because we can't have a negative a negative yeah. quantity. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Ma'am? Yes. Sorry. I'm a bit confused with that part, ne? because um, does, does P not represent prime? Pardon? Does P not represent prime? Yes, P represent price. And P is minus C over D. Yes. And then you, you just said that um, the quantity cannot be negative. Yes. So now I, 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 I want to understand as to why the dot of C over D is there on the graph. The dot of C over D? That the dot of minus C over D? Yes. Okay, you mean this one, right? Yes. Remember, uh, I said C and D are constant, meaning they can be negative or positive since they are just constant. Okay. So let's say we are given C as a negative number. If you substitute C here, you'll have minus to minus C over D, and this would be positive, right? And let's say we are given D as negative, we'll have um, minus times C over minus D, which is positive. This can be any number. So it's better you leave it like this, minus C over D, because you can be this can be, they can be any number, right? I'm not sure if I do make sense. Can okay. I just say something there? Hello? Yes. yes. 
I think I think what's confusing it's a negative sign because the negative sign is supposed to be on the far left side, right? Not where it is. Okay, let's just leave the, the negative sign. Let's just write C over D. But oh, it yeah. would make sense if we if we do an example here. But we're still going to use uh we're still going to use the vertical, the horizontal line as P is equal to minus C over D. So ma'am. Can I just understand? Okay, okay I, I I know negative. We cannot we cannot have negatives here, right? Mm -hmm. That's why I'm making. Okay, we cannot have negative here. It must be here. Yeah. But then at the same time, we can't have a negative price or a negative quantity. That's why we have to make. On the first quadrant. Okay, hi, ma'am. Can I just get clarity, please? Yes. Hi, um, but if it's on the positive, right, and then Q is on the positive, then the slope is going to be downwards. And you said supply has like a positive slope. Yes, it's interesting if it's like this. If if it was decreasing, it was going to be like this. Since it's okay. going out. It's in the oh, another thing you, you say if it's going this way, it means the price is increasing while the quantity is increasing, right? These two are increasing. But then if it was facing down, you see, um, if it was going down. The demand here was going to increase, was going to decrease. And now it's going up, meaning these two are increasing, right? Meaning the slope is positive. That's why I said it's positive. Did I answer you or I didn't get your question? Um, no, because isn't the, the Q, the Q's point is also on zero. So it's at zero at C. So it's going to be like on the axis. And then this one's on the axis too. And then if you connect the graph, so we downward sloping. Yes, it's on the zero. Sense. But you see our graph is facing up. It's going up. It's still continuing. Okay. It starts from Q is equal to zero, but it increases as the price in, in increases. Right? Um, you were going to say it's facing down if if I wrote it like this, then I put my arrow here. But my arrow is going that way, that direction, not this direction. It starts here, yes, where the Q is zero, but it's increasing. Yes? Um, Ms. Um, um, so the graph isn't supposed to be on the other side of the graph so that it can connect with zero and the quantity that it's supposed to connect with. No. Because if you, you write it from the other side and the slope goes up, it will connect all the dots. Remember if, okay, let me do this. If you write it this side, mm -hmm. That means the price is negative, and you you can you cannot have a negative price. You can't say um, but you are selling maybe your phone with negative three k. Meaning, if if someone needs a phone from you, needs to buy a phone from you, you'll give them three hundred k and the phone. You won't get anything, right? The price needs to be positive for you to get something. Meaning we can't, okay, remember here, the price is negative, right? The price is P and P here is positive. P here is negative, right? Quantity here is positive. And here, it's negative. 
right? We can't start this side. Because that means you are starting with the negative price. That's why when we start this side, we leave these parts out. We write dotted lines. We don't like or write a solid a solid line. Okay. Even if you, you don't write this part, you just write a line going up. It, it's still fine. You're still going to get in not marks. Okay, you sure you did get it? Yes, no? Yeah, yes, we get it. Yes, we got it. Yes. Is it safe yes, to say it. then? Is it safe to say that the negative sign uh, doesn't represent anything. It doesn't give us any information. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Of those two constant. Okay. That's just two one thing right mm here. -hmm. Can I, sorry, can I try and answer uh, what the previous person just said about um, the negative signs okay. not having anything to do with? Um, in relation to drawing the graphs, the, the negative um, sign is not included. But when you move on with price elasticity, you will see that it does have an effect on the price, but not necessarily on the graph. So hypothetically, it doesn't. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. It does, thank you. Thank you. Okay, and another thing, I'm not going to give you drafts since this is a multiple choice. For now, it's just for your understanding. Okay, suppose we are, okay, I'm doing that example on, on our study guide under supply, but I changed the numbers. Okay, so it's just an extra example. The wedding is the same. It's just that the numbers are different. Okay, now suppose that we are told that John supplies a hand printed t shirt to a truck market, and he only he said he will only supply the, the t shirt if the price is more than 80 rand. Meaning, he can't supply any t-shirt if the price is less than this, is less than this. So this means we have a statement, Q is zero if P is less than 80. Right. Remember, I said he will only supply when the price is more than eight. So if the price is less than 80, the supply would be zero. Right. And again, he will increase the outputs by 30 by 30 units if every oh, for every 10, 10 rent increase in price. Right, meaning okay. I will come to, to that point. For now, 
uh, I will use this one. Okay, let me go back to the question first. They said, so, oh, we need to write a draft and the function that represent this scenario. Okay, we are told that this join will supply T-shirt to the market if the, the price is more than 80 rand. And again, he will increase the output with 30 units for every 10 rand increase. Okay, there comes the slope. Uh, remember to draw the graph we need it either two points or one point in the slope, right? And then for now, we have we have this information. Q is equal to zero if P is less than zero meaning we have one point um, PQ is equal to 80 rand is to zero, 80 is to zero. Okay, remember our, gen our general equation for supply is Q is equal to C plus DP, right? And we have PQ is equal to 80, 0. And then we have our P as, Q, as 80 and Q as 0. Okay, we can use this, these two points. We can have 0 where there is Q as C. And we have 80 where there is P. Meaning we have 0 is to C plus 80D, 80D. If we simplify this, we'll have C is equal to minus 80D. Right. Okay. And remember, D is the slope of this graph. Okay, going back here. D is the slope of the graph, meaning if this is kept constant, D and, and Q, okay, D is the relation between P and, and Q. If if C is kept constant. Like, for example, if, if P decreases, as in we have minus, minus P, it will affect the value of Q, right? Let's say if we have minus, minus, minus three here, meaning our, our slope is negative. If we change, if we increase P by five, it's like we're decreasing Q by five. By five times, that's this negative number, right? And if, if this number is positive and we are increasing P, that means we are still increasing Q by any number times this value, which is our slope in this case, right? And then we are told that, okay, that's the, the statement that I said I will go back to. We are told that he said he will increase the inputs by 30 for every 10, 10 rand increase in price, right? Meaning we have the slope is equal to 30 over 10, which is 3, right? That means 
our slope for our slope here where the slope which is d will have will have three since this is the relation between these two will give us the relation between the price and the demand right because it's 80 is to 10 and the ratio of these two will give us three and three will be our slope in this case okay so we have c is equal to minus 80d and we have d is equal to 3. So you just have to substitute d here to find the value of c. And if we substitute d here, we'll have c is equal to minus 80 times, times 3, which is minus 240. Right, going back to our equation, we now have our constant, which is C and D. Okay, so our equation is Q is equal to minus 240, 240 plus 3P. Right, okay. Going back to the general the general draft, we said our horizontal our horizontal intercepts is z minus b. Okay, it's minus c over d, right? Is minus C over D. This is the draft of the general supply function. If we compare these two, we said our C is, C is equal to minus 240 and our D is equal to three, right? And we know that this point is minus C, minus C over D, meaning it's minus of minus 240 over three, which is, is it minus eight? Oh, it's plus 80, because we have minus times minus, which is positive. So our graph, this represent that scenario is, 80 QP. You see, now it's if, okay, since this is now a value, if you had negative here, it would have been wrong because you can't have negative 80 here. But since here, these, oh, since here we had minus C over D and these were just any numbers, then it was correct to leave it like this. Because um, I might say, see here, it's minus five and D is posi it's positive two. And someone else might say, um, see it's, it's 10 and D it's minus something. Since we don't know these two values, they can't be any number since they are constant. But now we know that this value is 80 and it's positive. So this graph is correct if we leave it like this. Okay, and another thing, our remember this value was was C, right? From our draft, this this value is C, and C here we said C is minus two forty. Again, you're not going to write this line. 
since we, we can't have a negative a negative price or a negative quantity. So it's better you start your draft here and leave these parts. Yeah. So on the supply function, the slope will always be positive. And on the demand function, the slope will always be negative. Are we all together? Yes, yes we are following. <clears throat> we have yes. questions. Yes, no. No questions. No. No. Can, I, can I ask something no about questions. the the eighty? The eighty. Yes. Okay. So it, on the graph we have we plotted eighty to zero. Yes. On the P and, and, and X um uh, axis. So if they if they asked us what D would be, so that would be the increase, we would say then D on the a, a Q X, and then we would plot it on where P would be. That would be the new price then. Okay, I didn't get you. Sorry. So say they, they wanted to know where would 3 be represented on the Q X. Oh, 3. Yes. It represents this, this shape. Remember, three three is just the tri the gradient, which is the slope. It just tells oh. us whether the draft is positive or negative. Okay. Since so you draw you you draft like this, hmm. you did represent three. There's no need for you to have a value of three, because okay. yeah, you just need the sign of three, which tells you the shape, the direction. your function, your plot. Sorry, man, the, it's just the Wi-Fi is a bit on and off, but I understand now, thank you. Oh, okay. Mm. Okay, please do those exercises. Um, yeah, especially the ones for determining the function that if you are given a scenario, please do those ones. Uh, you, you can skip the ones where you have to draw because you're not going to be drawing anything since you are writing a multiple choice. Okay, okay, that's that's good. Thanks. Now, do you mind if we ask a question on activity three? <laughs> okay. A question on activity. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, I've been finding it difficult to determine the, the, the slope there on uh with the with the values that we were given, as the question said, supply, the, uh, the supply supplies 50 t-shirts and 60 t-shirts per price. I mean, sorry. And then 90 t-shirts when the price is 110 per t-shirt. But then I was not able to understand how do you get the, 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 the slope? Uh, I don't know which exercise you're talking about. Do you mind no. to to no, no, watch post, post on on supply on, on supply on the forum? I will oh. do the step by step and post there. On the study guide, you were not given a step by step. No, but then I'm trying to make sense out of it because, like, the answer that I'm getting is way different. 
because yeah, it's not. I don't. I can't. It's it's like the example that you just did. It's, it, we don't determine the slope in the very same way. So here, I believe we have to subtract the quantity and the price divided. I mean, Q Q one and Q two. You subtract them divided by P1 and P2, but then it seems like it's vice versa. Yeah. So I don't quite understand it properly, because it seems like the price is on top when you check the answer. Mm. You said which exercise? Yeah, the one on page 13 on, on, on our learning guide, the exercise number three. Is that is it activity three? It, yeah, oh, it's, it's number three. The, the one on page eighteen, then then it's number three. Um, while Ms. Nkomo uh, is looking for that, can I ask, is your question about um, why, why, it's, why the equation of the supply function is as a function of Q and not of P? Yeah, because okay, okay, with Q I understand, but then what I'm trying to say is that how do you determine the slope? Because on the other side, it's you, you it's the ratio, but then it was P Q over P, but then this time on this equation it's P over Q. So I was trying to understand why is it so. Okay. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Ne. But if the if the slope is is equal to the change in y over change in x, Ne, do you yeah. not use um? Okay, because we have fifty shirts for the price. Okay, okay. The first one is fifty shirts with the price being sixty per the shirt. So is yeah. that not your P and Q? Your first P and Q, then the second P and Q is ninety shirts and one hundred and ten. Then you use those two coordinates and find a with that. That yes, you are doing with you, but then what I'm saying is that this time the price yeah, was on the bottom. Yeah, I think I think it was a mistake that one yeah. on the solution. I, I, I saw it when I was doing us of the exam. Yeah, I also got that wrong and I couldn't understand why. 
Because I guess when you determine the gradient, you don't know, you use it's usually y over x, not x over y. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, is it this question that says a, a supplier supplies 50 t shirts when the price is 60 rand per t shirt and 90 t shirts when the price is 110 per t shirt? Yes. Okay. Uh, you mean a, the one that says determine the equation of the supply? Of the supply. So uh, I wanted to know how do you determine the slope because you, you will have to write also the, the D, D is the slope, right? You'll also have to include it on the equation. But then how do you determine it? Because it seems like when I try to determine D, they are with the answer at the back, it's way different. So I'm trying to understand how basically we determine it. Or is it, the, is it the mistake that they made on the book? Okay, just a second. We have. I'm just trying to work it out here. No problem. Okay, you first find the gradient m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Oh, let me write that. And I'm not sharing my screen. <laughs> okay, it's this one. I'm going to read. We have two points, right? We have 50 is to 60, and we have 90 is to 110, right? Yes, correct. Okay, we can find our gradient here, which is M is equal to, okay, let me say this minus this and 10 minus 60 over 90 minus 50, right? And this is 50 over 40. Isn't supposed to be y over y1, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1? Yes, it's it's y2 minus y1. Yes, so is it y represented by p or by, by, by q? Y is represented by q. Oh, so we're supposed to have 60. Yeah, we're supposed to have 60. Minus that's 110. So, yeah, suppose we have 16 because y is represented by q. And remember, you I think 90 minus our, um, oh, our q <laughs> is the quantity which is fifth, and oh, the price is sixth. Yeah, I get it. So, we have. He said P is 16 and P is 110 and Q is 50 and 90, right? So we'll have 90 minus 50 over uh, 
and 10 minus minus 60. So this is 40 over 50. Yeah. And this means we have Q is equal to okay. and use B plus DP, right? So this means for our D we have we have four over five. So this means Q is equal to C plus four or five P, right? And we can use just one point. Um, to find to find C, yeah. right? Okay. Let me say I'll take fifty and sixty. Substitute sixty here plus four over five, and I substitute fifty here. Actually, it's opposite. Hmm? Actually, fifty, and then we substitute sixty on four over five. Then we we'll get our C. C is equal to sixty minus four over five times fifty. What's what? It's going to be 20. It's going to be? It's going to be 20. Our quantity is indeed 50. I remember. Quantity you, is 50. Quantity and is 50. 50. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's fresh. So 50 is just the 3 plus 4 over oh. 50. Yeah, five. again, five quantity five is 50. <laughs> So this means we'll have 50 here, we have 60 here, we have 50 and 60. So it's 60 divided by 5, which is 12, right? 12 times 4, it's 48. Then it's 50 minus 48 is 2. So our C is going to be 2. Okay. And this means Q is equal to two plus, is it five, four over five? Yeah, four over five, four over five, four over five P. Okay. It it this and, um, <laughs> Pardon? Which means they made an error on the book. Okay, what did they get on the book? Uh, on D, they got to 1.25. On D? Yes, so they, they inverted 5 over 4. They swapped. Oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, I'll fix that next year, next semester. Oh, I can only fix it next year. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so is it typing care or something? At least everyone is aware now. But now, yeah, my, my question. You guys who are doing exercises, imagine this study guide was like. Was now, my question, my question <laughs> for the two. Pardon? My question for the two. Um, I think the reason why probably it was like that isn't it? Because now when we worked it this way, it gave two. And two isn't supposed to be negative two, then plus, so that our formula for the supply, what is our equation for the supply came will come out correct on this one. Oh, are you saying the next question on, on, on the, they continue with the mistake they made in the first question? No, I'm saying that C, we found it is positive two. In most questions, I think C is most of the time negative. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think, oh, it means, you mean C over, over D, or it means C on its own? Oh, 
means see on its own. See on its see own. On its own. Oh, okay. Yeah, and in most cases, it is given as negative. As negative. So on this one now, when we calculated, it gave us two without a negative. So, mm -hmm. remember, so I think I understand. Yeah, I remember I said this C and D can be any numbers. They can be positive or negative. This doesn't okay. matter. Okay, okay. Oh, your hand is up. Hello. Can you hear oh, me? Was it an old hand? Yes. Yeah. Uh, would you mind recapping how you got the value of P? Of D? P. P. No, no. P for Charlie. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, the value of C. Okay, this is what you do. Uh, we have. Oh, yeah. We, we have D, right? On this equation, we have Q is equal to plus, is equal to C plus DP. Right, and you know the value of d is four over five. Then you can just go back to your to your two points. We said we have okay our q. We said it's fifty, right? We have q is fifty is to sixty, and we have is it ninety is to hundred and ten. You can just take it's either you take this point or you take this point. And then you substitute back here the value of Q or P. If you substitute the value of P, of Q and P, you'll have only one unknown, which is C. And then you can solve uh, and make, you can just make C the subject of the formula. And that would be the value of C. Okay, in, in, in our case, we had get 50 is equal to C plus it's 5 over 4 over 5. 4 over 5 times 60, right? Okay, what I did is I transpose this one, this, this, this value to the side. And if I do that, I will have C is equal to 50. Remember, I'm transposing this, so it will change a sign. So we have 50 minus 4 over, over 5 times 60. And if you punch this in your calculator, you will get 2, right? Because you have 60 over 5. Uh, 60 over 5 is 12. Then we have 12. Oh, you have 60 over 5 is 12, then 12 times this is 48. 50 minus 48 is 2, I think. Yeah. Ma'am? Yes? I'm a bit confused today um, when you, because at first you said it, uh, the equation is Q, which equals to c plus 4 over 5p and then uh you made your p 50 and then you made your q 60 and then you changed it um and then you the q, q became 50 and p is 60. so um, can we just go back to our points and then maybe explain it for me from there because when I look at the points, P is 50 and Q is 60, but I'm a bit confused. With okay. Q represent the quantity, right? Yes. And P represent the price. When the quantity is 50, the price is 60. Meaning Q is 50 and P is 60.
So uh, uh, Q is 50 and P is 60. Yes. Yeah. That's why here, where there is Q, we have 50. Where there is P, we have 60. Oh, okay. All right. Initially, I, I made a mistake. Okay, I did read. I, 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 knew the, I knew there was 50 and 60, but then I forgot that which one is the price from the numbers and which one was the quantity. Okay. All right. Is it fine now? Yes. Yes. Have you guys started doing the exercise, the, the thing, assignments? Not, not yet, not yet. Some of the questions that we were going to come. No, not yet. Oh, okay. May I ask, where is the assignment, guys? The assignment? Yeah, where is it? Because I, I haven't, I, I don't know where is the assignment. Mm. Like, not been on my life. My life. Oh. Yeah, just look. It's what? Have you seen this page? Yeah, I've seen this that page. I've done the quiz and. Then you go down. Here's the assignment. Or you can just. But it's in this it. area, and then you'll have assignments. But Last time I yep. checked, it was saying restricted there as it's, it's showing. But there. you didn't. Oh, on, on my side, it's restricted because oh. I haven't done the quiz. But I did the quiz. I will just double check. After yeah. you, you do the quiz, then you would be able to access the assignment. Oh, another thing. I've, I made a description. Okay, uh, oh, only 44 people have attempted. I've made the restrictions. Did it settings? Mom, I just want to make sure the quiz isn't. Um... It, it doesn't count for anything. It's only the assignments that are graded. Yes. Okay, okay you, you need to get at least 50% on the assignment or on the short quiz for you to be able to access the assignment. Okay. Yeah. They are just there to help you prepare for the assignments. Mom, how do you get the assignment? How? Um, How did it get where the assignment is? Okay, from the welcome page, on your welcome page, you scroll down. Assignment are on this, under these activities. The activity then. You press on this error, you'll see the assignments. All right, thanks. And the quizzes. Okay, uh, I'm tired. If if I decide to cancel the class to next week, I will let you guys know on Saturday or Sunday. I okay. Your hand is up. Yes, yes, sorry about that. Thanks. I just wanted to to ask a question regard, with regards to the assessments. Um, um, is it like, for example, I know it's it's multiple choice, so um, quizzes. 
So is it, um, for example, plus or minus 50 or 100? I don't like if, if you have that information. Thanks. Uh, what do you mean? Plus or minus 50? I, I, mean, I mean, for example, um, the ass assessment one or ass assessment one, uh, it's a quiz, it's a, it's a quiz, uh, quiz assessment. So does it consist of, for example, 60 questions, 80 questions, 100 questions? So yeah, that, that's what I mean. I think uh, I think assignment one has big thirty questions. Is it thirty questions? Thirty or fifteen questions? I, I don't remember. Okay, let me do this. It is a quiz. Okay, I have twenty questions in assignment one. Only have twenty. All right, then. Then for assignment two, I think I have 15. At the the mock exam, we have 30 questions because okay. it's like the exam and the exam has 30 questions. Oh, okay. Okay. At, um, when it comes to the marks, it, they differ. If the question is short, then that means less marks. If the question is long, that means more marks. All right, perfect, makes sense, thank you. You guys, you can go on now. I already <laughs> <laughs> That means you should go away, just leave your laptop, close those laptop and ah, I don't know, sleep. Thank you very yeah, much. Okay. Good evening. No, thank, thank, Lebron, thank you. Lebron, your much. hand is up. Um, yes, ma'am. Hi, hi, everyone. Um, I actually would have liked us to do uh, 3B from the question we were doing just now. But it's okay, but I would like maybe in the next session, because the question 3B is related to actually transforming the functions. And I see there's quite a number of questions that relate to transforming the functions where the question would say transform the function uh, from Q to P or vice versa. So I would just like maybe in the next session, ma'am, if you can try and focus on questions like that, where we actually have to transform the functions. Okay. This is for my main. Can we do it now, or you guys are leaving? Okay. Well. I'm available. I can do it. We can do it now. Sorry. I will play. Um. Okay. Since I, I'm I'm no longer recording. I've ended the recording. We can start with it that day, but it's just a second. And we can do one example. It means that, that the answer is going to change, right? Yeah? Because, like, now we've got a different function from the one which is mentioned on the activity that the answers at the back. Mm -hmm. So which means the answers will change, definitely they're going to change. But then it's, it's straightforward. Yeah, that's true. Okay, please write on under discussion forum your question. I will try and do step by step and post, this, post, post it there. If I can't, then I will take the question. We'll do it here when that day when I come back. Okay, if, if if I didn't send and if I don't send any announcement that the class is cancelled, you guys you have to come here on Monday. Yeah. I'll only I'll... make announcement when I cancel the class. When I don't cancel, just know. Yeah. Yes. Uh, for three point three three a, they say determine the equation of the supply function as a function of Q. But I see on, on the memo it's expressed as a function of P. So I don't know which uh, 
amount of D is the correct one? Because I get 0 0.8. If if they said you should give it as a function of P and they wrote it as a function of Q, that means they made a mistake. No, the, 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 the question says express as a function of Q. This, which question? 3A. Let's mind the equation of supply function as a function of Q. And the, the solution is given as? A function of P. As in P is equal to? P is equal to um, P is equal to negative two point five plus one point two five Q. And they said you should give it as a function of Q, right? Yes. Okay. This means. Uh, 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 uh. If, if you say y is equal to maybe a plus bx, and you say a and b are the constant, this means this function is a function of x, because you can write this equation as y of x is equal to a plus b. X, meaning this function depends on, on X. Meaning they said you should write it as a function of it. Your P must be a dependent function, but P is always a dependent function. Okay, but then this form is correct. If they said write, um, your, your equation is a function of x, you're going to write it like this because y, because you can write y as y of x, right? Again, we have q is equal to c plus dp, right? Meaning yes. you can write this equation as q of p is equal to C plus DP, meaning Q, Q is a function of, this equation is a function of P, right? Again, if you had P is equal to C, A plus B plus, plus BQ, right? You can write this equation as P, P of Q is equal to A plus B, B Q, meaning this is a this equation is a function of Q. Does it make sense? Yeah, kind of. It doesn't. Thank sense. you. Okay, we'll do more examples that that time. Oh, I think this is what we, we, we need to do now. Uh, I think we have to complete chapter one and chapter two, and then we do the revision. So that you guys, you use your last attempt again back on the assignment, on the assignment, right? And we start again with our sections. So that that will give you more time to ask questions before you use your last attempts on the assignment. But you do you have to work on those assignments for now. Just leave the last attempts for a revision. Hi, ma'am. Yes. Um. Well, the recording we had today we also made available like the previous session. Yeah, I'll, I'll always 
post upload the recordings. Thank you very much. Yes, Ruth. Ms. Nakomo, if we don't have Hello, how are you? Monday. Hello? Oh, you you wrote you were number one. Yes, I just wanted to ask how many attempts do we have on assignments? We have three. Okay. All right, thank you. On the mock exam, I think we'll have just two. Did I put three? Ah, there's supposed to be two. That's on okay. the other assignments, they are three. All right, thank you. Oh, if if you guys you wait until the last day and when you attempt to assign oh like assignment one is closing on, on the third of March. If you wait until until the third of March, there might be a traffic. Meaning you'll have pro a, a, you'll have problems logging in on my UNISA. And then that's what results in you not attempting the assignment. And if you don't attempt the assignment, it's zero. And if you don't do assignment one, even if you pass other assignments, you won't write the exam. Sure. Anyway, yeah, guys, I also need to study. If you don't have questions, we can end here. Okay, nothing in the